Two minutes after swearing to be a true and faithful Deputy Prime Minister, launched straight back to form. First five questions. Turning our question about his te reo policy into a direction to the state-owned broadcasters, TVNZ and RNZ. How quickly do you expect government departments and government agencies to, to act in well, we'll removing speak, we'll te reo Māori? We'll with TVNZ and RNZ, which are taxpayer owned, understand this new message. We'll see that whether these people, with the media and journalists, are they independent? Well, that's not fascinating. I've never seen the evidence of that the last three years. Outlandishly and incorrectly claiming the government had, quote, bribed the media through the Public Interest Journalism Fund. You can't defend $55 million of bribery. Repeating for effect. No, 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 you cannot defend $55 million of bribery. Get it very... He obviously doesn't know, or he does, and as you say, speaking to the cookers, I've told you guys this who weren't aware. We're here in New Zealand on funding. They fund projects. So, for example... Jack Tame's program, Q&A, has NZ on air funding. Six o'clock news, doesn't have any. Any of those specials before the election that we got booted off YouTube for, one of the reasons TVNZ wanted to enforce that, whether they were right or they were wrong, is they have to pay for that themselves through advertising. So just, I just would need everybody to know, uh, RNZ, different story, because they're ad-free, they're completely public, completely. TVNZ, not the case. They, they t- NZ on air funds projects, and one news is not considered a project. So it's not, they don't actually fund very much of TVNZ news when it comes to their news content. But Chewy, I think you're right. And this is where I think if he keeps this up, remember we had that conversation about Plunkett. Sorry, I didn't mean to meet. I'll, I'll only say his name twice because if it's three times, he'll turn up behind you. Um, and how at the start of him trying to build that, um, you know, piles of diarrhea that he calls a platform, um, he really went to the cookers. He went to them and we had the conversation that his dilemma was going to be, because that's not his beliefs. Does he stay pitching to them, which was an audience that was growing, or does he risk going back to where he actually truly thinks and believes he'll lose them and then he may have no one? He made a choice and a decision to go back there upon direction from the Wright Family Foundation, to be clear. And But since then, he's been slowly drifting back. Now, mm. I actually think, and I wonder if what will happen with Winston Peters is he'll have to have that same decision as well. Because if he keeps pitching this stuff to the cookers like that, there will be people who are who who like Winston, who are you know, fans of Winston, who will get sick of it and who won't buy it. That, that will be a percentage of his voting bo- uh, base. And so he'll either have to choose at some stage to go full on in that area of dis and misinformation, or he'll have to move away from it, go back to where his natural roots would be, which are the, the Blue Rinse Brigade, and then he'll lose the cookers. And it'll be interesting to see what happens. But I I think that I, I get the sense that him keeping on doing this kind of stuff will cost him more than it will gain him when it comes to votes and support in the next election.